hi guys welcome to this channel if this is your first time watching you're welcome kindly subscribe and click the bell icon this will allow you to be notified whenever i drop a new video also leave a comment let me know what you think about this story stay tuned in the heart of a small dusty village in africa where the sun scorched the earth and the wind whispered secrets through the baobab trees lived Kwame, a boy of substantial size. Kwame's presence was a noticeable as a vibrant sunset that painted the sky each evening. Yet, despite his physical stature, he often felt invisible, seen only through the ash lines of mockery and disdain. Kwame's family, though rich in love, was poor in wealth. His father, a hard-working farmer, and his mother, a weaver of beautiful, yet simple clothes, struggled daily to provide for Kwame and his two younger siblings. The scarcity of their meals only seemed to contrast more sharply with Kwame's size, a fact that did not escape the cruel jibs of his peers. School for Kwame was a battleground, not of intellect but of endurance. The other children would tease him ruthlessly. Their world as stingy as the old sand he walked upon. Hey Kwame the Giants, they would cheer. Or oh, Kwame, why don't you eat a bit more? You are lucky too thin. Their laughter would follow him, echo in his hair long after the school bell had rung. But Kwame had a secret. In his mind, he was not just a boy. He was a hero, a warrior, a king. In his imagination, he was as swift as a gazelle, as strong as a lion, and as brave as an eagle soaring above the plains. His daydreams were sanctuary, a place where he was respected and admired. One evening, as the sun began to dip below the horizon, batting the village in a warm, golden light, Kwame overheard a conversation that would change the course of his life. Hidden behind the market stall, where he often went to avoid the teasing on his way home, he listened to a group of men speaking in hushed, excited tones. They say it's hidden deep in the forest. One man whispered, a treasure from the old kingdom lost for centuries. Imagine what we could do with such wealth. Another replied, his eyes glaring with jet. Kwame's heart raised, a treasure, a real-life adventure like in his daydreams. He could find it, he thought. It could prove everyone wrong, show them that it was more than its size, more than the poverty that clutched to his family like the red dust to his feet. As the men dispersed, the seed of a daring plan took root in Kwame's mind. That night, under the cover of darkness, he would venture into the forest. He would find a treasure and became the hero he always knew it could be. But as Kwame lay in his bed that night, staring at the touched roof above him, a flicker of uncertainty crept into his heart. The forest was said to be a place of spirit and shadows, a labyrinth of dangers untold. Was he really brave enough? Could he truly face the unknown? With those thoughts swelling in his mind, Kwame finally drifted into a restless sleep, not knowing that the following day would mark the beginning of an extraordinary journey, a journey that would lead him to discover treasure far greater than gold or jewels. As the moon rose high in the night sky, casting a gentle glow over the sleeping village, the stage was set for an adventure that would reveal the unseen strength of Kwame. Under the clock of night, Kwame slipped out of his modest home, the soft glow of the moon guiding its steps, his heart pounded in his chest, a realm that echoed the excitement and fear inside swinging within him. The village lay still and silent, its inhabitants lost in dreams, unaware of the young boy embarking on a quest that could change his destiny. As they approached the edge of the village, the familiar sight of home faded, giving way to the shadow outline of the forest. The tree stood like ancient guardians, their branches swaying gently in the night, breeze whispering secret of the ages. Kwame existed for a moment feeling the weight of the unknown pressing against him. But the thought of the treasure of open, proving himself spurred him forward. The forest was alive with natural sound, the hosting of an hole, the hustling of leaves, 
the distant call of a night creature. Each sound seemed to carry a message, a warning perhaps, yet Kwame pressed on. His eyes adjusting to the darkness were allowed to every one movement, every hint of danger. As he ventured deeper, the forest seemed to transform. The trees grew taller, the truck thicker, the leaves denser. Moonlight struggled to penetrate this new, violent canopy, casting eerie shadows that danced around him. Kwame's imagination, so often his alley, now conjured images of lurking spirits and hidden beasts. He shook his head, trying to dispel the fear that threatened to overwhelm him. It was then that he had a soft, melodic voice. Why does a boy wander the forest at night? Started Kwame spurring around, searching for the source. His eyes landed on a small bird perched on a nearby branch. Its feathers a brilliant array of colors, even in the dim lights. You, you can talk, Kwame stammered. It surprised momentarily overshadowing his fear. In this forest, many things are possible, the bird replied. It's head tickling curiously. What see Kwame the boy who walk with every step and every thought? Kwame hesitated, then driven by an implicable trust, he shared his quest for the treasure, the bird listening intently, his bright eyes never leaving Kwame's face. A quest for treasure, but perhaps also for something more, the bird mused. I shall guide you, Kwame, for this forest old secret not just of wealth, but of art and soul. Elated and relieved to have a guide, Kwame followed as the bird flittered through the trees, leading him deeper into the heart of the forest. They spoke little, but in the bird's company, Kwame's fear subsided, replaced by a growing sense of wonder. After what felt like hours, they arrived at a clearing bath in moonlight. In the center lay an ancient stone pedestal, overgrown with moss and vines. Atop it rested an old, little bone map, its edges frayed with time. This is what you seek, the bird declared, alighting on the pedestal. Kwame reached out, his fingers trembling as they brushed against the cool leather. But before he could unfold the map, a chilling hole echoed through the forest, followed by a canophony kind of menacing sound. The peaceful night had vanished, replaced by a sense of imminent danger. Kwame and the bird extend a look of alarm. The forest, it seemed was not done with its secret and their quest was far from over. The night had deepened and with it the mystery and peril of Kwame's adventure. What lay ahead? Neither Kwame nor the bird could foresee. But one thing was certain, the journey had just begun and its path was fraught with challenges unknown. The all that pieces the sydneys of the forest reverberated through the tree, setting off a symphony of whispers and ruthless. Kwame's heart raised, a drum beat of fear and a drilling now. He clutched the ancient map tightly, aware that the newfound part of the treasure was now intertwined with imminent danger. Bandits, the bird whispered, its voice thing with urgency, they roam those woods in search of the same treasure. We must be cautious. Kwame nodded, his eyes darting through the darkness, trying to pierce the veil of night and clock the forest. The playful adventure spirit that led him here was now overshadowed by the reality of the peril he faced. Guided by the bed, Kwame moved earthly, each step deliberate and silence. The map was a beacon. Its promise of treasure allured not just for him, but for those with the less noble intentions. As he navigated through the dense foliage, the distant sounds of the bandits grew closer. Out voices cutting through the night, the clinging of weapons and the crouching of new ever boats. Kwame still turned to the village, to his family sleeping soundly, unaware of the danger that locked in the darkness. The realization struck him like a boat. The bandits, if unchallenged, could threaten more just than his quest, they could endanger his entire village. Torn between the lure of the treasure and the safety of his home, Kwame rested with the decision. The bed, sensing his inner turmoil, spoke softly, something the bearer's journey is the one that lead us back home. Resolute, Kwame made his choice. He would return to the village, warn them of the impending danger. 
the treasure, though her love and pale in comparison to the safety of his loved ones. But fate, it seemed, had other plans. As Kwame turned to leave, the ground beneath him gave way. With the thunderous roar, a landslide, loose by recent rain, cascaded down the hillside. Kwame scrambled, but the earth swallowed his path, cutting him off from the way back to the village. Panic and despair gripped him. He was trapped, the way home barred by a wall of earth and stone. The bed, flapping its wing frantically, struggled to find an escape through the chaos. As the door settled, Kwame found himself isolated on the wrong side of the landslide, the forest stretching ominously before him. The path to the village was lost, but the journey to the treasure remained cruelly open. With a heavy heart, Kwame realized that the only way out now was forward, deeper into the heart of the forest. Perhaps, within its depths, he would find another way back to his village, another way to warn them. The night grew darker, the forest more foreboding. The map in Kwame's hand was no longer just a guide to treasure, it was a lifeline, his only hope in a race against time and danger. As he ventured deeper into the unknown, with a loyal bed by its side, Kwame understood that the true test of his journey had just begun. The treasure, the village, his own fears, all converged in the shadowy depths of the forest, where every step was a step into the unknown, every breath a whisper of courage against the encroaching darkness. The darkness of the forest seemed to deepen with each step Kwame stood, wrapping around him like a tangible scroll. The moon, once a friendly beacon, now struggled to penetrate the thick canopy above, leaving him enveloped in near-complete darkness. The once familiar trees now loomed like spectres, their branches reaching out like twisted hands. Kwame clawed the ancient map tightly. Its quick could serve as a reminder of the gravity of his crest. The bed, flitting from branch to branch, remained its sole companion and guide. Its vibrant colors a stark contrast against the muted world around them. As the journey departed into the heart of the forest, Kwame's nature of fear gradually gave way to a sense of purpose. He began to see its size not as a burden, but as a strength. His large feet, which had once made him the subject of ridicule, now allowed him to tread firmly on the forest floor. His step steady and sure, his broad shoulder, a source of embarrassment in the crowded corridor of his school, now felt powerful, capable of pushing aside the heavy foliage that blocked their paths. The challenges of the forest were relentless, turning vines snake across their paths, sharp and unforgiving. Wild animals, curious or threatening, locked in the shadows, their eyes glinting in the darkness. But with each obstacle overcome, Quare's confidence grew. He was no longer the timid bully boy from the village. Here, in the heart of the world, he was a warrior, a protector, a seeker of hidden truths. As dawn broke, painting the sky with strokes of pink and orange, Kwame and the bird arrived at a clearing. In the center stood an ancient tree. It struck wide and glared, roots spreading out like a network of natural pathways. Here, the map indicated lay the art of the treasure's secrets. Kwame approached the tree, his finger tracing the intricate pattern of its back. It wasn't gold or jewel that he found, but something far more unexpected. An ancient artifact embedded in the art of the tree. It was a sculpture carved from a single piece of jade, depicting a bird in flight, remarkable similar to the bird that had guided him. As he touched the sculpture, a sudden rush of understanding filled him. This was not a treasure of material wealth, but of ancient wisdom and power. The bed, sensing the significance of the moment, passed on Kwame's shoulder, its warm, reassuring presence. But their moment of discovery was short-lived. The sounds of the bandits, distant but drawing closer, shattered the tranquility of the morning. They had followed the small trail, driven by greed and the allure of remote riches. Kwame realized that the artifact held power, a power that could either protect or destroy. He faced a choice to use it to escape the bandits and fight another path back to the village, or to confront the danger, risking everything to protect what was truly valuable. As the bandits closed in, their voice rushed and menacing. Kwame's decision crystallized, 
with the ancient artifact in hand and the wisdom of the forest in his heart. He prepared to face the impending confrontation. It was a battle not just for the treasure but for his own identity, for the respect he had longed for and for the safety of the world he called home. The clearing was a place of discovery and revelation, now transformed into a battleground where the truth taught of a young boy, courage would test it against the shadow of creed and the peril of the unseen world. Well guys, that will be the end of the story. Don't forget to like, comment and share. Thank you. Bye.